Hi guys, Nick here with BitGalaxis, bringing you a new Unity 3D video on torque physics. And before I jump into Unity, I want to talk about the setup I have here. I'm going to have several ship models in a scene, and each of these models is going to have rigid body components. Um, they each will have box colliders, and they're all going to have different box colliders, and I'll explain that when I get in there. And they each also have the same script applied to them for input and physics forces. So to go over that script real quick, we have a variable for torque and a variable for thrust. Torque is how much force we're going to apply to spin our ships, and thrust is how much force we're going to apply to move them. Um, and so you can set those in the editor, but each of them is going to be left at their default values of 500 and 1000 respectively, as you can see at the top there. We also declare our rigid body. So in the start method, we're actually grabbing the rigid body component from each of those ships. And then in our fixed update method, we are going to get the input. So we're going to set the input variables to yaw for our horizontal, and to, we're going to set the vertical input to throttle. So the left and right arrow keys are going to make our ship spin uh, on the y-axis, and then our up and down are going to make our ship move forward and move backwards. And they're very simplistic. They don't actually use any like jet propulsion type physics. It's just we are applying a force to move it or rotate it. Um, down here you can see we actually are applying those forces. So we're using that rigid body that we've gotten and we're going to add relative torque and we're going to rotate around our transform dot up uh, times our torque, which is 500 times our yaw, which is the input for the horizontal. We're also going to do an add relative force and that's going to be uh, times on, on a transform dot forward and that's going to be times our thrust which is 1000 times our throttle which is the up and down arrow keys or the uh, WS um, vertical input basically. So let's jump into Unity. So here in this scene I have four ships set up. And as I mentioned earlier, each of these ships has a rigid body component, um, and their masses have basically been pre-calculated. And how I did that was I took each engine and each cockpit is a thousand, and each of these compartments that these ships has is also a thousand. So this ship is one, two, three, three thousand, one, two, three, four, four thousand. And then this is five, so that's 7,000. And then this is a stack of seven, so that's 9,000. So 3,000, 4,000, 7,000, and 9,000. So when we're talking about force, we're applying the same force to each of these, which is 1,000. So I'm actually going to make these go backwards so you can kind of see clearly which ones get to the bottom of the screen faster. So if I push down on the arrow key, um, we're going to see that the smallest ship does accelerate faster and it does get to the bottom faster and in order of mass each of these gets to that bottom line so force is pretty straightforward but torque is very different so now we're just going to rotate each of these ships and as you can see you might think well this farthest one right is the heaviest so it should rotate the slowest correct well, let's go ahead and rotate each of them. Again, remember these are all the same torque and we're going to see by holding it down that the one on the furthest right actually spins much faster than the one immediate to, immediately to its left which is the one that is a mass of 7,000. And so you might be asking why that is and the reason that's happening is because of where the mass is. So when it comes to torque in Unity and in real life, um, the rotation or the amount of torque that is required to move an object is much greater the further away the mass is from the center of the axis of rotation. So as you can see here, the axis of rotation is the y-axis up and down. We have much more mass, but all of that mass or most of that mass is very, very close to the axis of rotation. Whereas on this ship, that's about seven units long, or seven, um, seven units long, it is, um, its mass is spread out further from the axis of rotation, so it has a lot more distance, and that mass is more is further away from the center of that axis of rotation, and it, so that makes it move a whole lot slower. Um, and what they, the, the physics term they use for that is the moment of inertia. So. 
Some things that you might consider with that is, uh, for example, a hoop uh, will move much more slowly than a disc, effectively, because more of the mass goes towards the center, um, whereas a hoop, the mass is just on the edge. So, and that's kind of a, like assuming like if you have two objects that weigh exactly the same and have the same circumference, if one is a hoop and one is a disc, the disc will rotate faster and require less torque to rotate. Let's jump back into Unity and I'm going to add this ship here to demonstrate something for you. Um, it's going to be kind of interesting to see. Uh, I'm going to reset its position here to zero uh, and I'm going to disable these other four to show you how this ship behaves. Um, and we're going to change a few settings here real quick. So the player ship has a mass of 1,000. I'm actually going to set this to 3,000, just like the smallest ship we had earlier. But I'm also going to change its torque. Remember all the other ships, they kind of moves, you know, relatively quickly. We're going to set this down to 1. So what we would expect if we set this down to 1 is that this ship should really not move hardly at all. Um, and so let's see what happens. And I rotate, and the ship is actually moving almost as fast as the others, maybe even faster than some of them, especially that, that one that was five long or that one that had a length of about seven uh, meters or so. Um, so what's happening there? And you probably already caught on that this ship has no box collider. And so it has a very, very small moment of inertia. It has mass, but that mass is effectively a point. And that mass's point is the angle uh, where we're spinning around, and that angle of rotation has basically a length of zero. And so just by having a torque of one, because all the mass is in one center point, um, we require very little torque to move it. If we were to add a box collider, uh, just right there, just adding a box collider, we're not going to change it, not even make it the same as the ship. Now we see that if we try to rotate this ship, it doesn't really seem to move at all. I'm, I'm, I am pressing down the right arrow key and it is not really noticeably moving. You can kind of see it here with the with the aliasing, um, but that's not much of anything. So just remember the further out the mass gets from the angle of rotation, the more torque is needed to move something. So one other point of consideration here, I'm gonna re-enable uh, this Actually, this really long freighter here. So one thing that is, you know, we need to think about is that in Unity, there is no distinction um, between densities of a box collider. If you have an object uh, of, of any size with box colliders, and we're using that box collider to make these calculations, remember that this box collider, all, this density of this box collider and this box collider and this box collider are all the same. So let's say that this ship is actually, let's say that the ship has a full load and at a full load, it weighs 7,000. 1,000 is in the cockpit, 1,000 is in the engine and this compartment in between uh, when it's full weighs 5,000. That's the shell and all the things inside of it. But let's say when it's empty, the mass is actually only, I don't know, 3,000. Let's say the shell is only 3,000. Well, the problem with this is the way we have it set up now that we aren't really saying we've got 1,000 here and 1,000 here. We're saying we have 3,000 throughout. So remember, the mass throughout has all gotten lighter. We can't specify a density for that middle box collider. Unity is going to automatically calculate that for us. So if you want to change that, something you may have to do is instead use four box colliders that are really, really small and make like the walls. Uh, that way you have two really big objects that may actually end up being about 2,000 and uh, four small walls, things like that. Because otherwise, if you try to rotate this, um, what should happen if it weighs 3,000 is something that is 3,000 and the density of it is consistent throughout should rotate a little faster than something that weighs 3,000 where most of the weight is at this end and this end, if that makes sense. So if we had 1,000 here, 1,000 here, and about 1,000 all the way between this and this, then anyway, that's everything I have for today. If you thought this video was useful, hit the like button. Thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you next time.